Hello, hello, hello! You guys are tuning in to another episode of The Wonderkin Show. <laughs> How you doing? It's your host Nitro, and today's topic, right? Lamar Jackson makes some unspoken statements. Now, I know there's been a lot of Lamar, 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 Lamar. I know, I know. But I gotta cover it. <laughs> And I feel like I'm covering it with honesty and integrity. So this is what we're going to do today. Okay. So there were tweets after or before, um, after and before the press conference that had happened with um, EDC and John Harbaugh. And everybody understood from, from yesterday's uh, video that the presser was pretty much just saying that, look, Lamar Jackson is 200% our quarterback. We're trying tooth and nail to get this deal hammered out. We want him to be the Ravens' uh, starting quarterback for the foreseeable future up on, and, and for his career to end there. Um, and also, Lamar would have say for the OC. So, before it all came out, so Lamar, I think, because remember, they specifically said that they talked to Lamar before the press conference. And the press conference, I believe, was at 2.30. So before 2.30, I believe at 1.49, Lamar Jackson retweets a Pastor, West, a Pastor West's quote that states, financially, I'm going to win. Career-wise, I'm going to win. Mentally, I'm going to win. Emotionally, I'm going to win. And physically, I'm going to win. And that pretty much goes right up to what John Harbaugh and EDC were saying, saying that Mr. Uh, Lamar Demetrius Jackson wants to win in everything and this is why edc made the difference between lamar and mr jackson lamar is the player lamar is the ever beloved uh qb that everybody adores on the team but mr jackson oh see mr jackson is the is the is the snake viper he's the one that hi ha with my money ha I ain't taking no discount. Ha! What you looking at, man? You thought this was sweet? And guess what? He even said it. He said he has to be, he has to have, he, him, John Harbaugh have to differentiate the two. Because Lamar, when he walks into that business meeting, he's no longer Lamar the player. He's Lamar the agent. And EDC said he's differentiated the two very well now. <laughs> That's just letting you know how about his business this man is. But I'm going to keep going because we're going to get over this stuff, right? So after that, Robert Griffin III puts out a piece because this is now letting everybody know that Greg Roman will no longer be with the team, right? And that uh, he's moved on to greener pastures. So Robert Griffin puts out, Greg Roman may be the greatest run game tactician I have ever been around at the NFL level. Running backs and tight ends love his system because they eat. Right? That's what they're saying. That's what it says. Word for word. It's a quote. Wide receivers, though, you know, the guys that catch Lamar Jackson's passes, they absolutely hate it. That's why free agent wide receivers didn't want to go to or stay in Baltimore. It was never about Lamar Jackson. And that's once again RG3 defending his bro in arms, Lamar Demetrius Jackson. And Mr. Jackson went forward and liked and retweeted this post. So this is what I tried to tell everybody before. Because we've had multiple videos stating that, look, Lamar doesn't hate Roman, he's just outgrown Roman. You get where I'm coming from? The Ravens thought one thing of Lamar. They saw his legs. They're like, we're going to run his legs, and then his arm will be the complimentary piece. Not, we're going to invest in his arm, and his legs will be the complimentary piece. But they've seen the light. Lamar Jackson is one of the best throwers of the football in the entire NFL. And if you do not watch game tape, then you just don't know football. But L Lamar liking and retweeting this 
peace. It's letting them know, like, look, I don't have no, I have no hatred for Greg Roman. I just know that I've outgrown him, and I want to run a pro style offense. And that's why it brings me to the very next tweet, okay? Because a young man named Emery Hunt then puts out during or right before when everything was coming out that says, "Let me just get this out here before folks start wrongly discussing the Ravens' search for a new." O.C. Lamar Jackson ran a pro. Where my gunshot? Lamar Jackson ran a pro style offense in college. If you did not know, and do you know what that Mr. Lamar Jackson did? He liked it, retweeted, and put "thank you" with two hands right above it. Now. This hits at different levels because this is what I've been trying to tell everybody when everyone, you know, so many media analysts come on. And you guys have heard it. Oh, this offense was built for Lamar. Like, no, it was not. It's the same offense that was in Buffalo, the same offense that was in San Fran with Colin Kaepernick. But they make it seem that the Ravens made a specific offense with such intelligent intelligence for Lamar Jackson to get the most out of his very unique play style. And that play style is the only play style in which he could play in. Oh. Ignorance at its finest. Because Lamar Jackson is not a running back. Lamar Jackson is not a wide receiver. Lamar Jackson is an NFL starting, former league MVP, league leading touchdown passer, quarterback. Have you guys ever noticed that in the media, when it comes to Lamar, they start putting him in separate categories? Unlike his other um, counterparts. Oh, he wins a lot. But it's not like he's passing for those yards. But what about his touchdowns? Well, you know, those are short touchdowns. He's not really good at the deep throws. Do you know what? This is why I've laughed so hard during this entire deal. Have you guys realized? I want to point this out for all of my fellow Wonderkins. Have you guys realized that as soon as the news came out with Greg Roman, there was nothing but defense of Greg Roman? What is Lamar Jackson going to do? That's the offense that they that it was made specifically for him. Bruh. He can't run anything else. Bruh. What are they going to do? Bruh. How can they pay him if they can't run him? Bruh. Oh, God. And if you guys think that I'm exaggerating or putting any more emphasis on this, then it needs to be had. Turn your head no further than one named Emmanuel Acho that did an entire segment with other former NFL player and NFL insiders about the subject in which I am speaking about. So that's why I'm covering this. Because Lamar Jackson has done nothing but prove himself since the day he's came to the NFL. Nothing, no reprieve was given when come to this man. When it came to Lamar Jackson, there is no such thing as pause. Hold on, I'm tired. It's always go, 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 go. Because they're always looking for the smoking gun. They are always looking for the lie, the misrepresentation. But it's okay. It's okay. Because what we're seeing now, after the MVP year, was a whole bunch of walking back of comments. But as soon as they could do it again, they feasted. Because they believed, hey, we got the upper hand on him in the media. We could double down on what we used to say and just say, oh, he had a great year, breakout year, Cinderella year. And, you know, think about this. I want you all to see what this is coming from. Most of them do not even want to. They're saying it now like, oh, I want to see him with the wide receiver. Most of them didn't want him to have that. They were saying, oh, they've done so much for him in Baltimore. Lamar's telling y'all now, I haven't, no. I haven't had the comparable help that my counterparts have. Or even had. And now you're getting reports 
and also was stated inside of the presser that the there's going to be an entire overhaul of the wide receiving corps. Lamar Jackson is speaking loudly with his silence and tweets. He doesn't have to say really much. He can just retweet something that he sees that his whole point gets right across. Clear as day. I'm talking about clear as a summer midday with a slight breeze during a picnic with one of your loved ones. Clear skies, white clouds. And he's been doing it with the expertise of someone that's been doing it for years. That's I think that's the frustrating part that people have with Lamar because what they've done is even the way that they say, oh, Stephen A. touched on it and said, oh, he he doesn't have the acumen to walk in there as an agent or something like that. You have judged this man by looks alone. And what I mean by that is he wears the chains. He has the hair braided. Down south, southern draw as he speaks. But everybody around him be like, this, this is a very intelligent young man. <laughs> Extremely intelligent. You see, I, I tell this to people right now. They always say, don't judge a book by its cover. But the cover is not even bad. What you're correlating it to are um, hip-hop stars and such. Or people that you think do, do not have the intellectual... Um, acumen to be in the position in which he is in. Why do you think you've heard so many people across the planet, oh, if there wasn't for football, he'd be nothing or certain things of that effect because they believe that only because of his physical attributes, his mind is nowhere near his phys physical ability. So they take shots saying that, oh, remember when he was coming out of college, you can't even say, oh, Nitro, I think you're going too far. When he was coming out of college, one of the knocks that they were trying to say it was never a knock in college, but when he went to the NFL combine, was that how are they going to understand him while he talks? Can he actually learn an NFL playbook in its entirety? Oh. Of course he can. Can he actually throw the ball at an NFL level? Oh. You know he could. He has his mom representing him. Oh. That's the woman that gave birth to him. You better show some respect. See, this is the conundrum that faces it. Because I've told you already what the media likes to do is prime the pump. Prime. Prime. That's what they do. And what I mean by prime is they'll take something like how you used to be for wrestling. And you'd have certain characters play the heel. And they make certain people a character, meaning the villain. And no matter what he does, it is flipped into a specific narrative along the lines of a villain. And they're always, well, but that's not true. That's not true. What we're saying is actual questions that people have. How? If the question's already been answered. You guys said he couldn't throw. The man threw for 36 touchdowns in one season. While, while not playing an accumulation of roughly Two and a half games. That's in an NFL with a Patrick Mahomes, with a Josh Allen, with an Aaron Rodgers, with a Tom Brady. They chalk that up to luck. <laughs> ah! Bruh. <laughs> Yo, have you ever heard as much excuses when it comes to the success of a Lamar Jackson? Ah, uh, they just get lucky, man, because of the run game. They get lucky because he runs around a lot. It won't be able to last long, I'm telling you. He's not the thrower that Justin Herbert is. He's not even the player that Justin Herbert is. Lies! Lies. And this is why when you come on, like, what you're going to get here is honesty. I'm going to give you a perfect example of that before we go. I'm not a LeBron James fan. I've, I've just never been a fan of his. When I was growing up, my fandom around NBA players was uh, Michael Jordan, 
Allen Iverson, Baron Davis. Those were my favorite NBA players growing up, okay? I was never a big LeBron stand like how some of these guys are nowadays. But even though I'm not a big fan of his, even though I think that he cries and whines for calls at times and stuff like that, that doesn't mitigate his greatness. To me, LeBron James is number two greatest player to ever play. And yes, I know, I know, he's, he's played with a lot of all-stars, a lot of this, a lot of that. That does not take away from the accolades in which he has achieved. The man has, what is it, <laughs> was it four, five titles? Four? Is it four? Yeah, one with Cleveland, one with the Lakers, two with the Heat. Yeah, the man has four titles. MVPs out the wazoo, led the league in scoring, has led the league in assists, leading all-time point over Kareem. And I'm not a LeBron fan. But I can recognize his greatness without degrading the name and the, and the person in which he stands for. You see, that's where a lot of people, lose. even if you didn't like somebody like a Lamar, Right? If you, if you didn't like him. To make the insinuation that NFL defenses are so stupid that they can't adjust to somebody that can't throw. Seriously? Seriously? He's been nothing but a model citizen. The guy has been the heartbeat, the heart pulse of the city of Baltimore. And everybody around him absolutely adores him, wants to play with him. So then after a while, all Lamar Jackson is doing, like in these tweets, are reaffirming our beliefs. He's a pro quarterback that can run as a complimentary piece in case things break down. He believes himself to be such. He plays his game as such. And multiple former players, including your guys' GOAT, have came out and said, look, that guy is next. That's what Tom Brady, imagine this, right? If you take the top 10 QBs of all time, Tom Brady's on that list. Steve Young is on that list. Both of them. Steve Young has said, look, man, he can go down as the greatest player this game has ever seen. Tom Brady goes, bro, you're next. You think that's coincidence? Seriously. Seriously. Do you think that Steve Young is just going off of a narrative and so is Tom Brady? So what you're now saying, you're questioning the football acumen of Tom Brady and Steve Young. And they were called two of the smartest quarterbacks. Peyton Manning himself said the same thing. Like, he could just do things other quarterbacks can't do. He can do everything the normal QB could do and more. Don't try what he does at home. So, okay. So, Peyton Manning, Steve Young, and Tom Brady is lying to you guys. I'm telling y'all, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> ah, but that was another episode of The Wonderkin Show. <laughs> Yes, sir. Thank you guys for tuning in. Like always, you guys are amazing. You can be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with me, and you know I appreciate that. Please do remember, though, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. You do know that I will respond to them. I have fun talking to you guys in the comment section. Just please be cordial to everybody else and be respectful. That's all I ask. And for the other people that would actually like to leave a monetary donation to the show to help the platform grow, down here is a QR code. In the description is the cash app for it. Money sign. The Wonderkin Show. Because we're almost at a thousand, but we're not a thousand yet. So this is not a monetized uh, platform. So this is another way for us to generate generate uh, funds to help the channel grow. That's all that is. All right? So once again, this is The Wonderkin Show. This is your host, Nitro, signing off. And you guys knows my slogan. Peace. And I'm out of here. <laughs> Till next time. <gasps> yeah!